Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Valeria and this is the Offroad Ranch. Today is surprisingly windy and rainy and I decided to make this video in the car. So, today I will tell you about some rules of nutrition if you are in the wild. I will talk about the following things. General restrictions for cooking and storage in the wild. The rules that I talked about earlier in the video number 4. My nutritional rules that I adhere to while living at the off-road range. My diet. And in the end, I will touch on nutritional possibilities of each of us due to various factors and circumstances. Let's go! Earlier, in one of the previous videos, I talked about the importance of a balanced diet and how I eat. However, these rules I talked about are easy to follow in urban and comfortable conditions. When a person has an access to a wide range of products, the availability of electricity, the ability to cook whatever he wants and to store food. Also, medicine and doctors are available as well. For example, a nutritionist, a therapist and others a particular person needs. But in the wild, the situation changes completely. For example, there is no opportunity to buy usual products you need. There is no opportunity to store them. Sometimes there is no opportunity to cook or there is not enough time to cook. Of course, there are no sanitary or hygienic conditions as those we have in the kitchen at home. Of course, there is no opportunity to order food or to go to a restaurant. And often it is not possible to take any food with you, especially if you can follow long distances, since every gram of weight and every gram of eat for every meal is calculated. So situations can be more difficult or easier, but nothing ever happens the same way. Before I start talking further, I would like to say that I have a small wish and I need your support a lot. I would like to reach 10,000 subscribers by Christmas Eve. But the problem is that 97% of people watch my videos without subscribing. And this makes my dream extremely difficult. If you watch my content, please subscribe me and turn on notifications about new videos on my channel. And if you like my content, please share your friends with my channel. I cannot afford paid advertisement, so you are my hope and support. Thank you. If we talk briefly about the rules that I followed in the video about nutrition, then they remain the same for other living conditions as well, and they sound as follows. The quality and quantity of food consumed depends on many factors and characteristics of your body alone. For example, your lifestyle, your activity, weight, age, health characteristics, restrictions and doctor recommendations, needs for vitamins and minerals, and so on. That is, there should be as many calories as you need based on the characteristics of your body, physical and intellectual work, and other needs. Further, all food consists of protein, fats, and carbohydrates. None of them can be excluded, and you need a combination of them that suits you. The body needs all of them to perform vital functions, to build, destroy and absorb certain substances and to protect certain organs. There are products that are not recommended for consumption. For example, simple carbohydrates and products high in sugar, ready-to-cook products with long shelf life with a large number of additives, preservatives, stabilizers and dyes, products with a high content of unhealthy fats. But there is the fact that when living in the wild, such products are often a part of the diet, precisely because sometimes we need simple carbohydrates to restore energy levels quickly. Also, we need shelf-stable products for being in difficult conditions for the required amount of time. Meals ready to eat, other words, individual rations of soldiers of all armies confirm this. However, if you have the opportunity, then such food is very undesirable for constant consumption as it affects your health. Moreover, you need to drink enough clean water, not tea, coffee or juices. I have already been asked in the comments, 
why clean water is needed and not, for example, green tea. Water is needed to clean the body, since tea and coffee are products for the stomach. Cells need clean water as the basis for the formation of substances, for the removal of harmful substances, for good functioning of intestines and other processes. Water prevents headache and protects joints from aging. It is important to have enough vitamins and minerals. Sometimes we have a deficiency of certain substances, especially if there are little vitamins and minerals in food or if there is a high level of stress. In addition, health characteristics and other factors play a role. And the last thing as a brief repeat of the rules that I talk about in the video number four is that it is not the standard of appearance, not weight, not a new diet, not senseless dietary restrictions imposed by marketing and society that are important. Your well-being and your health are important. Feeling healthy and functioning fully is much more important than meeting the standards and opinions of certain influential companies and people. The same rules must be maintained in the wild environment, but this must be done differently. Since being in natural conditions has restrictions on purchasing, cooking and so on, as I said earlier. Moreover, the body experiences stress and increased physical activity. I am talking not about a weekend camping holiday or a one-day hike or glamping with all the benefits of civilization. I am talking about serious hikes that have increased risks to life and health compared to urban conditions, about hikes that require survival skills, about constant physical activity in the natural environment and other difficult conditions. Therefore, proper diet is even more important. In addition to increased loads and stress, there are other important factors. It is impossible not to eat enough and to work well at the same time. Firstly, you will constantly want to eat. Secondly, you will feel weak, tired and inattentive. And most likely, the very next day, you will feel that your body refuses to think quickly and work efficiently and actively. In addition, with insufficient nutrition, the body will take longer to recover due to small amount of nutrients. Also, it is clear that the risk of catching a cold or illness and the recovery time increase as well. My friend, I would like to ask you one more time. Please subscribe and turn on notifications about new videos on my channel. Also, I ask you to share your friends with my channel and ask to subscribe as well if they are interested. I want to make my dream true by Christmas Eve. And currently I'm trying to accumulate money for buying a mini house in order to survive on the off-road range in winter and to continue the project generally. So I will be grateful for your financial support. You can also send money for a tree in the Monero cryptocurrency. And I have a separate video about this cryptocurrency. Dear friends, a wild storm has begun, so I have to finish my speech, this video, this part of video, and I will continue tomorrow, I hope, or a few days later. So, today is sunny, but wind is just awful. But let's continue. Next, I want to talk about my rules for storing and cooking food. First, you need to understand that you yourself must know how to cook and how long you can store food. And for this, it is better to use standards of cooking and storing for different products, taking into account temperature conditions of the places you are going to. For first times being in wild places, it is advisable to be there with a person who has good practical experience in various areas, relating not only to nutrition, but to all aspects, especially emergency medical care, self-defense and emergency evacuation. So, all products must be stored under suitable conditions. Temperature, humidity, lightning and isolation. Food should be consumed within periods of time without the risk of poisoning. Let's take as an example a daytime temperature of plus 30 degrees Celsius in the shade and a night temperature of plus 15, plus 20 degrees Celsius. In such conditions, 
I can store raw or marinated meat for a maximum of 24 hours in a closed package, taking into account that I bought it as fresh as possible. It is necessary to store meat at least in the shade, and preferably in more humid places, and to cover it with damp soil or a rack, but of course without access to it by insects or animals. I buy eggs only on the day of consumption from local residents in the quantities that I need, so that I can cook them immediately, eat them in one meal and not store them. This is a difficult product for storing. Despite the fact that according to sanitary conditions for storing eggs, storage at plus 20 degrees Celsius is allowed for 25 days, in fact, I wouldn't risk eating eggs even after 12 hours of such storage. As for dairy products, sometimes I buy them from locals if they produce them. However, in this case, it is necessary to be sure of its quality, since poisoning with dairy and meat products, as well as with fish, has very serious consequences, especially in the wild. And although I like cottage cheese and cheese, I do not have special safe conditions for its safe storage. I am just surprised with the strength of the wind. So, let's continue anyway. Canned food. Canned food often becomes a real salvation for those in the wild. However, when purchasing or making your own, you must be sure that the manufacturing technology was followed, otherwise its quality is very questionable, despite the shelf life of several years or even several decades. Moreover, after opening, it must be consumed immediately. Poisoning by these products can be fatal, but if canned food has been prepared correctly, it can be stored for up to 100 years with further safe consumption. Eating cereals and vegetables is much easier. The conditions for cooking and storage are also often less demanding on the environment. And with proper cooking and combination of the right spices, you will not get tired of the taste of dishes made of these cereals and vegetables. In addition, cereal poisoning goes away much faster and easier, but of course it is advisable to stay as healthy as possible. I consume the following cereals – rice, buckwheat, oatmeal, couscous, barley, and also pasta. I also eat legumes, beans, lentils, peas. As for vegetables, I eat carrots, garlic, onions, tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, and others. Everything that is available to me and that can be stored for a long time, even in difficult conditions. Also in my diet there is dried meat, which I calculate it in portions, prepare it and dehydrate it before leaving to the off-road range. And I want to tell thanks to my friends for their help. I store it in small Ziploc bags. It is a very good source of protein, but needs to be soaked for a long time before cooking to absorb water and soften completely. It shouldn't be eaten dry, since after entering the stomach, such meat begins to absorb water in the stomach, increasing the acidity of gastric juice. I make soups with it that I eat every day. I haven't bought industrially dried meat yet, as there was no need. There is no interest in trying either, since there is home-cooked meat without additives or preservatives. However, it is better to store such meat in the dark, in a cool place, and, once again, it is better not to leave it in the sun. Back in the video number 24, I talked about how I would use an improvised food warehouse to store food. How does it look like? I bought two containers with a volume of 40 liters and 100 liters, made of special plastic with a narrow neck and a tight lid. Next, I chose a place where the improvised warehouse would be located. It is advisable to find a cool place in the shade or near a body of water to reduce the temperature. I dug several separate holes so that the containers fit in completely and there was still 50 cm above the lid. It is necessary to bury the barrel in a hole and cover the top of the hole with a small awning mounted on pegs. The onion should retreat from the edge of the pit by about 50-70 cm on each side to create additional shade and protect from direct sunlight as well as from precipitation. It is advisable that the onion be raised in the center so that precipitation doesn't accumulate in it. You need to remember this place and not to walk there unnecessarily, so as not to step on an improvised refrigerator accidentally. To reduce the temperature around the buried hole, you need to water the soil generously. This way, you can get a temperature in the barrel of 5 to 10 degrees Celsius. Ideally, before preparing the pit, prepare several large pieces of ice, equal in volume to the volume of the barrel, and place them at the bottom of the pit around the barrel. 
This way, the temperature in the container will drop by a few more degrees for several months and, in a good case, can be approximately plus 3, plus 5 degrees Celsius. In such temperature conditions, meat can be stored for up to 72 hours and lard can be stored for up to 10 days. But the shelf life depends on the actual temperature in the container and on the cooking method. I cannot tell you how to cook lard. Different people in different countries do it differently. And some don't even know what lard is, and some don't cook it at all due to different beliefs. For each container you need a thermometer. In addition, containers must be kept dry to prevent insects or fungus from growing inside. It is important to ensure that condensation doesn't form there. To do this, you can use special absorbent potters or to ventilate the container once a month for several days. For everyday household needs, I use 100 liter container. And for long shelf food and other household things, I use a 40 liter container that I haven't opened for several months. Prepared food shouldn't be left overnight on the street or near a tent. Firstly, in the summer at night it can be plus 35 degrees Celsius. Secondly, food smells attract white animals and snakes. You can leave prepared food outside in a sealed bag in temperatures below there. And somewhere on a tree, not on the ground. The bag must be clean and shouldn't be touched with hands smelled of food. If you need to leave cereals or legumes in water overnight, it is also better to leave them in the car, for example, or in a metal box outside. You can leave the cereal outside if there is only cereal and water without spices and salt, and the pot is perfectly washed from food residues. Ideally, you need to cook before each meal, that is, three times a day. Cooking over a fire is very different from cooking at home, for example, in a frying pan. Firstly, the temperature of the fire or coals differs from the temperature of the stove. And secondly, this temperature is uneven, and accordingly, the heating is uneven. It depends on the air temperature, humidity, wind direction, wind speed, and so on. In addition to the fact that you need to observe the order and timing of cooking the ingredients, you need to monitor cooking constantly, and everything takes a lot of time. If at home you can put a pie in the oven and forget about it for 40 minutes before the timer goes off, then when cooking over a fire, you have to stand for 40 minutes and watch the food being cooked. Of course, the cooking time should be such that all food is 100% ready. But these figures are different for all products and climatic conditions including altitude. Your cooking experience also plays a role when you know how much food will be cooked and how best to prepare it. If you don't know how to cook properly, then use recipes and cooking standards and do not experiment in order, at a minimum, not to get poisoned. An integral factor is the cleanliness of food and utensils, cleanliness of food preparation area and hand hygiene. You should always wash not only dishes and food, but also wash your hands with soap and dry with a clean towel or disposal towels. After cooking, most often, dishes should be washed and dried immediately. But in different climate zones and weather conditions, the rules may be different. For example, they will be different in the mountains or on winter hikes. But this is a separate story that is not related to the topic of today's video. Different types of water are often used for cooking and washing dishes. Drinking water and industrial water. In any case, the cleaner the water, the lower the likelihood of poisoning or infection. You don't know what bacteria live in the reservoir and what kind of garbage was in this water. Of course, bacteria can also be found in a well at great depth, especially if it hasn't been sourced for a long time and water samples haven't been taken to be tested in a laboratory for the presence of various substances, bacteria and other dangerous insects and microorganisms. This could also be your own well on your property, if in the spring any meltwater runoff got there with huge. That's why criteria for choosing a land are extremely important, and I told about them in one of my videos. Also, the composition of the water will affect your well-being if it is very different from the one you are used to drinking. When you initially consume water that is unfamiliar to you, you may feel ill, but later you will get used to it. With prolonged composition of water with a high content of various substances, for example, iron, chlorine, sulfur, and so on, it is necessary to monitor your well-being. If you are unable to buy drinking water at the store, there are now many ways to filter your water and add minerals to it. For example, personally, at my site, 
First, I use special filters for hard water with several degrees of filtration, and after that, I boil the water. In general, being in the wild, it is important to stay healthy. The main factors of poisoning are dirty hands, dirty dishes, poor water quality, pre-spoiled food, lack of standards for food preparation, non-compliance with storage conditions. Please, keep an eye on these factors. As for my diet, for the most part, I've already talked about it. I eat three times a day, trying to eat at the same time as much as possible. Every day I eat different cereals and legumes. Legumes are good because they contain quite a lot of protein, and this is important for the balance of protein, fat and carbohydrates. But legumes are quite difficult for the stomach to digest. For the stomach to work better and easier, once a day I definitely eat soup. Also, when hiking, the same as at home, you need to go to the toilet periodically, ideally every day in the morning. This is an indicator that your stomach and intestines are working properly. My diet also includes sweets and nuts, but in small quantities. As I said, sweets are not healthy for our bodies, but fast carbohydrate they contain. Sometimes I need it after physical activity to replenish the energy efficiency in the body quickly. Also in the evening, sometimes it is very nice and relaxing to sit near the fire, to eat sweets or cookies and just relax. I also eat halva, which contain protein, since the main component of halva is nuts or sunflower seeds. I eat nuts in small quantities, since they are difficult for the stomach to digest and it can interfere with the intestinal function. If I go to the city or to the store, I can take marinated meat, which I will eat for the current and the next day within 24 hours. If I had the opportunity, I would buy protein powder as an additional source of protein, but at the moment there is no urgent need in it, and uh, I do not consider it necessary to spend my already sparse finances on it. If I understand that the night is cold enough, then I will spend more energy at night to warm up, which means that I need to have a hearty dinner with hot food. I always make a thermos for the night, even on warm nights, because in the morning I can drink tea before the water is heated and food is ready. And on cold nights, tea helps to warm up. If I don't have time to eat on schedule due to work, weather conditions, slow burning of wood or other factors, then nothing bad will happen if I eat a couple of hours later or even right before bed. Since after a few months I feel good, I have the chance to work, I'm getting stronger and the results of measuring weight and other parameters say that everything is okay, then I'm sure that I maintain a balance of calories, fats, carbohydrates and protein necessary for the proper function of my body. As for long hiking, people use special tables for food and meal standards per person based on physical activity and natural conditions. When people go hiking for more than one day, every gram weighs in your backpack and you will regret 100 times if you take something that is not very important to you, because you will have to carry the things until the end of the route. In the end, I would like to say that all of us have different nutritional capabilities. Because, firstly, everyone has different hiking goals. Further, everyone's finances are different. Moreover, there are different products that are available in different countries. Somewhere you will have to cook everything yourself, like me, but somewhere you can buy ready-made products with incredibly tasty dishes that you can cook just in 15 minutes. However, keep in mind that in 99% of cages, industrially produced food contains additives, preservatives, dyes that are very undesirable for long-term consumption. We also have different conditions for cooking, availability of time, different climates, availability of water, the ability to take more weight and food with you and others. The desire to cook also matters. Someone will prefer to make some preparations at home. Someone will cook everything in the wild. Someone will buy everything in the supermarkets in advance. 
In a word, there are many variations in how you can organize your meals, starting with the full set of what supermarkets offer you and ending with any combination that you come up with in a creative impulse. In all this, my main emphasis is on ensuring that you follow the rules for cooking and storing the food and the balance of calories, fats, proteins and carbohydrates so that you always feel good. Of course, I cannot tell you all the rules of proper nutrition, especially since this concept is very ambiguous and depends on many factors, from the person's preferences and his state of health to the situation in which a person fights himself. After all, this can be real survival if a person accidentally finds himself in a wild environment without any means for cooking and he has to look for food that will be under his feet. Therefore, today I shared with you my vision of nutrition that suits me in this situation, in my current state of health, with my current physical activity. I hope that I was useful to you and you gain knowledge from my video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. And once again, I am sorry for this awful wind. It was Valeria, the off-road range. Wish you all the best and see you soon.